There's another method. All right, I like it. Ohm meter. There's another method to identify this potential open in the coil. What is it? We have 12. We have zero. We're not done. Circuit's energized, right? We're not done. Can't say the circuit's good yet. We, we got to check this coil, make sure it's good. What is the test? I'm at, I'm at, there's one more test we can use to identify the coil without unplugging it and without using the ohm meter. What do we want to measure? We already measured voltage, good. Amperage. Uh, amperage tells me what I want to know here. Okay, if I see 12 and zero, let's say I bidirectionally turn this on, I see 12 and zero, and I connect my ammeter here, or, or either side of the circuit, right? We can connect maybe my ammeter here or here. Remember what comes in, comes out. Let's say my, my ammeter reads zero amps. What's wrong? I have 12, I have zero, and I have zero amps. There's no current flow, which means what about the coil? It's open. It's open. It has to be. The coil's open. These are all tests we need to maybe do to this car. Okay? Zero amps, 12, uh, 12 and zero. If we see zero amps, that means the clutch coil is open. Agree? All right. So if we followed that process, I've had this argument over the years. Someone will chime in and say, well, Dan, are you really never checked the ground and it's it's a good argument because if the coil is open what did i tell you guys about checking voltage on a ground when there's no current flow it's not a good test because couldn't i also have an open here and still be reading zero here and when i'm reading zero here i'm saying to myself my ground wire is fine okay here's my reply to that argument did we confirm with a 12 and zero reading and zero amps that this clutch coil is open. It's the only thing that'll give me that, okay? So we confirmed the output is open. So you mean to tell me the output opened the same time the ground wire opened? Guess what? It doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Now if you feel the need to go ahead and check that ground too, in addition to the solenoid needing to be replaced, we can do that. Just take your test light to battery positive and what should it do? It's your light. Why am I using my test light? Because I can't load the circuit because the coil's open. So the voltmeter isn't my friend right now. Does everyone understand the argument? You're not going to have an open and an output and a wiring problem at the same time. You know how many times I've seen it? Never. Not once. Never. In 26 years of doing this, I have not seen an open and another open on the same circuit. Here's the argument where I hear this a lot. Here's my circuit. Load side of a relay. Here's my fuel pump motor. I do my checks down at the tank, energize the pump circuit, I see 12, I see zero, pull my ammeter here, I see zero amps. What's my problem? Switch is closed. Remember, where, where's the voltage coming from? It's coming this way. I have 12 here. Can't be a bad switch, okay? Yeah, it needs a fuel pump. We're done. This car needs a fuel pump. Motor's, motor's open. So I hear this a lot, you know, when you're exposed to you know, quarter of a million people that all have their own opinions. They say, well, Dan, you really didn't check that right because you didn't load that ground. You're right, I didn't. What would a bad ground look like? If you're gonna argue with me and tell me the ground is bad, what would a bad ground look like in this scenario? Well, let's open it, open ground. What am I gonna see? I ain't gonna see zero, I'm gonna see 12. Did we absolutely 100% confirm the fuel pump is open? Yeah, you could argue something in the tank's open, whatever. You gotta drop the tank, yes. Put the pump in it, do your wiring checks in the tank when you drop it. The tank's gotta come down. Check your ground if you want to, right? If by, it is possible, I'll give you that. It is possible to also have an open ground the same time you had a fuel pump failure. It can happen. I've never seen it, but I guess it can. Physically, it could happen. I don't know, you were four wheeling and you freaking, jammed the rock and the vibration of the hitting the rock it like you know was enough to break a brush contact off the electric motor and at the same time that rock sliced the freaking ground wire of the wiring harness that's the only scenario i could think of where it could happen physically it could happen so you sold the, the fuel pump to the customer did it need the fuel pump yes and when you're done 
you didn't see, you didn't, here's the, here's the before and after with the bad fuel pump and the open ground. Before, you read 12 and zero and zero amps, okay? After, you now read 12 and 12 with zero amps. What do you have? Open ground. Go fix your ground. Go find it. Fix it. And don't say anything. Does that make sense? I mean, because you'll never convince anyone that it had both problems. If you go up front and be like, well, I have a bad ground now, they're going to be like, you never needed a fuel pump. You have the evidence that you did. Does that make sense? So my, my argument to that is fix it when you're done if you ever see that scenario. Okay? Voltage combined with current flow is the keys to some of this troubleshooting. And when you can't have current flow there, that test light can be your friend. You guys, with this clutch, you know, this is a system I've never checked. I've never measured one of these and never worked on one of these. Is it going to be hard? No, it's a freaking coil. I got a power and I got a ground. I'm assuming it's power side switch because both wires go to the computer. We'll find out. We'll find out. And that's done with the test light. We can figure out our circuit design. And we can use our scan tool in a bi-directional mode. This is, this is going to be a, a real easy one to troubleshoot in my opinion.